of debate, novice division. So again, kind of just going over the agenda, we can just do a little bit of a warm up. This was a team building exercise, but we will skip that for today. We'll go into some speaking drills, just talk like so you can get your warm up, get your voice ready, get that drill in, just practice because we do have a tournament coming up pretty soon. We also need to find you a debate partner since you are middle school. So um, you do not have any like inherent partners at your school, like, you know, since you're the only one. So we got to find you a partner. Do not worry about that, but we should get you registered like just as a maverick for now. And then once we get somebody, we'll enter you as a hybrid. So we'll do a warm up, we'll do some speaking drills, and then we'll do a quick activity. We will want to be doing a tournament recap. It's supposed to say tournament prep, and we'll move on from there. So going on to our speaking drills, again, we're just gonna start with speed. So that is where you read as fast as you can for two minutes. So I'll give you a moment just to pull up your evidence packet and we and will also the silent. main categories within it. The first is going to be your time also, you frame. So coffee? how long will it take for your problem to be solved? So if you have an issue, let's say climate change and you're like, we need to reduced fossil fuel emissions or else the world's going to end in 2027. I made that up. It's that's let's do let's do 20 let's do 2098. Let's do 2098, okay? 2027 is kind of sad. So, you're like the world's going to end in 2098 unless we reduce our fuel consumptions by 10%, right? So your time frame is going to be 98 minus 21. 69? No. What's math? 79. No, wait, 70, no. 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 Wait, 98 minus 21? 78. 77. Huh? 77. Yeah. Wait. 98, 21. Subtract 8 minus 1 is 7. 9 minus 2 is 7. Oh, did you say 98 or 99? I don't know. Let's do 98. <laughs> so, um, so our time frame would be 77 years that we have until our impact happens, right? Until the world's gonna end. So that's your time frame. It can always, it could be as long as you want, it could be as short as you want. You wanna make sure that your time frame is like quicker so that the issue seems more pressing, right? So if I have your time frame of like 77 years for climate change, whereas we can have an impact such as structural violence, which is happening now, the judge is more inclined to pick the impact that's currently happening or that's going to happen sooner. So that's kind of like the time frame. You're kind of weighing which impact is more important and time frame is one criteria that you can weigh your impact by. So you're like, this is happening sooner, it's happening now, prioritize it over the other impact. Magnitude is going to be how many people are affected by this, right? So it's kind of like, this is kind of a bad way to put it, but it's kind of like the, the body count, like how many people are going to be physically impacted by this impact. So if you have, again, climate change, you can say that the whole entire world is going to be affected. You can go into animals and go to ecosystems. You're going to be like, this population is going to be affected by climate change. So you can say 7 billion people, billions of animals, hundreds of plants, right? Whatever you want to do, like <laughs> just figure out, calculate how many people are going to be affected. If you're in like structural violence, it could be like a particular instance, like a war that's going on in another country, you can see like the whole population of that country is affected by it, right? So that's the magnitude. How many people, what is the population who is affected by this? So if you're talking about like, this is also a terrible way that debate usually boils down to is like how many people are dying and like who should we prioritize over the other? Policy debate's weird, but um, you can say like, we should weigh climate change higher because the magnitude is higher, like it's 7 billion people, it's the whole planet, it's the animals, it's our entire earth, right? It's going to be impacted by this. That's our magnitude. So we should prioritize it over a war that's happening in another country. That's how you would weigh magnitude. And of course, time frame then comes back into play, like the war is happening now, climate changes in 77 years. You can see how like the different criteria come into play. Like it's not always going to be like, you won't always be ahead in every category. And that's why it's important to stress to your judge which categories are more important. So if you're like, I'm not really winning on time frame because 77 years is like a long time whereas this war is happening now, you should prioritize magnitude over time frame because more people are gonna be affected. 
So this is where you kind of like lay out to the judge, like which criteria they should prioritize. And of course you're gonna go back and forth through their team. Like, no, we should prioritize like violence now versus violence in future. Y'all can debate that, but this is kind of how you structure it. And then lastly is probability, which is how likely it is that the impact is gonna happen. So if we are saying that climate change is gonna happen, right? What is the probability of it escalating to where it's gonna end the world? We could say it's gonna be unlikely due to the fact that there's technological advancements happening. People are starting to go into more alternative energy sources, like they're less dependent on coal, all that clean energy is becoming a new trend. So you can argue that the likelihood of climate change ending the planet is super unlikely because we're making steps to combat this. Whereas the probability of the war that's happening is uh, like definitely happening now. So it's not even a probability, like it's it's happening. So we would so you would win on probability and time frame because you have a quicker time frame. So because it's happening now, like the likelihood of the war happening is very likely because it's already happening. Whereas climate change is a lower probability because we're making we're taking steps to combat it and it has a longer time frame because it'll be 77 years before the impact is triggered. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions on time frame, magnitude, or probability? No. Okay. Perfect. So this is what you're going to use to like evaluate the impacts of your plan. So again, if we're talking about like like we need to pass this plan because the impact's gonna happen in X amount of years. We need to pass this plan because this amount of people are affected and we need to pass this plan because the likelihood of it happening if we don't pass the plan is inevitable or something like that. Whatever you need to do to argue it. But that's kind of how rebuttals fit into debate. Um, yeah, now we would usually do like an impact calculation tournament <laughs> if there are other people here. But we can, I guess we can do it with like two people. So how it, have you done, I think you've done an impact calculus tournament. I'm not sure, have you done it before? Um, we had as a debate, a policy debate camp, but I don't fully remember it. Okay, totally fine. Um, I can reiterate how impact calculation works or like an impact calculus debate works. So it's just going to be, I'll give you a topic or you can pick your topic and it'll be an impact. So for example, it could be like bioterrorism versus climate change. And then we would have to then give a one minute speech on our impact. So what is it, who is it affecting? You know, why should we care about it? All those good things. And then we'll give a 30 second speech as a rebuttal. How do I explain this? So it's basically spar debates, but we're using the impact half framework for this part of me. So you'll be giving an impact and you'll have the first speech to explain your impact and you'll have a 30 second rebuttal to use the impact calculation framework to argue to the invisible judge who's not here to vote for you. Any questions? No. Okay. So there is not gonna be a winner because you know if it's just me versus you, there's no judge. Um, so it'll just be good practice just to kind of talk about impacts and just thinking about like how you would apply the framework to different scenarios. So you can pick your own scenario or I can give you one. It doesn't ha even have to be a serious scenario. We usually like throw in some fun ones like zombie apocalypse or, you know, <laughs> or asteroid hitting the earth or, you know, it can literally be any impact you want and you just have to apply the framework because it can apply literally anything. So I can give you a minute to think about one, or I can just give you a random one, and we can do a spar debate. Can I have a minute to think? Totally. All right. Let's give um, four thirty-five. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Also, if you think of your impact, like before 435, you can start prepping on what you want to say. Okay, I think I got it. 
Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, okay. Well, we'll keep going until 4.35 and you can start like prepping. So just think about how your impact like fits into the framework and then we'll just run it. It doesn't have to be about this topic, right? No, it can be literally any impact you want. Do you think that's enough time though to prep or do you want more? Um, it's okay. Okay, cool. So four, well, one more minute. Okay, <laughs> we got this. All right, are we ready? I hate my mute button. Okay, no, no, you're totally good. Okay, so would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? Uh, I can go first. Ooh, okay, love the initiative. Okay, let me set a timer. Um, I'll set it on my phone so you can still keep the framework up. So again, we're gonna do one minute, um, like kind of constructive. So just kind of like laying out what your impact is. And then the, we'll do 45 second rebuttals. That'll give us more time to kind of like think about the framework and really dive into it. So we'll do one minute constructives, 45 second rebuttals, and we'll just alternate. Cool. All right, um, one minute. Do you wanna time yourself? Uh, you can time me. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay, time starts now. If we don't end mass incarceration, then people will be, more people will be thrown into jail and this will affect a ton of people. So on time frame, we went on time frame because in the early 2000s, in just a few years, it, the population of people inside of, uh, inside of mass incarceration went from 1 million something to 2 million. That's, I mean, that's a lot, and it's rapidly increasing. We went on magnitude because millions of people are thrown into jail, but also their families are affected. Maybe they don't have good enough jobs and they can't support themselves, and their friends are maybe emotionally affected. So millions and millions of people are affected by mass incarceration. And we win on probability because mass incarceration is happening right now and people are in jail right now. And it's a problem that we need to fix or else all minority communities will be in jail. All right, thank you. You came out with the mass incarceration. Okay, I gotta think <laughs> for a second, but for fairness, I'm just gonna start my timer. Okay, so my impact is gonna be the bees dying. So currently within our society, there is a lack of care towards our bees and bees are the foundation of our ecosystem. They are how we eat, they are how our trees grow, how our plants grow, and without them, our ecosystems would be destroyed. They would be laid away, so we wouldn't be able to have any food for our crops, we wouldn't be able to grow any plants for our oxygen. None of this would be possible without a steady bee population. Over the years, the bee population has been cut in half to which we are currently almost at capacity and at any moment could be at the end of ecosystem collapse. So therefore we need to prioritize the bees dying. Unfortunately, mass incarceration is a big problem. I do not concede that it's not a big problem otherwise. However, there are a bunch of mass incarceration relief programs that are already in place to help reduce the amount of mass incarceration. Whereas there hasn't been as large of a discussion about the bees dying and that's why we should prioritize them over Mass incarceration. I'm gonna stop there. Okay, 45 seconds. You ready? Yep. Okay, whenever you're ready. All right, time starts now. So, my opponent is talking about bees dying, but mass incarceration affects humans. And with human, if we save lives and we um, there's more people to build off of ideas and we have human innovation because humans are coming up with all these different things to solve problems every day, whether it be with renewable energy for climate change or something else. So we could find an innovative way to stop the bees from dying, but mass incarceration needs to be fixed now. And we could do both if, because uh, people who are in jail, since millions of people are in jail, they could... Um, maybe some of them want to be scientists. I mean, that's not impossible. So they could engineer something to stop the bees from dying. It really just starts with ending mass incarceration. All right, perfect. Rebuttal for me. 
I haven't debated in so long. Okay. So first of all, we should prioritize the bees dying first on time frame. The bees are dying now. There are plenty of relief programs that are reducing mass incarceration. And as there has been no time frame given as to when mass incarceration would impact the level that would be harmful to society. So since there's no time frame, I went on time frame because bees are dying currently. Um, and we only have less than five years before the whole planet is destroyed. Next on magnitude, the whole planet, 7 billion people will die if we do not save the bees because they will not have any food to um, help them otherwise. Also probability, there's a very high likelihood of this happening. In addition to where there is, again, I said there's no programs put into place to help the bees dying. So they're dying at a rapid rate. If we do not do anything, we as a human race will cease to exist. So we should prioritize the bees. Thank you. Okay. That is our rebuttal. I could have done better, not gonna lie. Um, so how I would also frame the bees to make it more detrimental is be like, we need to prioritize continuing on the human race, right? That's how I should frame it. Because if I do, we should prioritize like human surviving human survival, like humans will still survive with mass incarceration, but they won't survive with the bees dying. So we should prioritize, like, you know, that's kind of how I should frame it, but you know, reflection's good. But you did really good on the mass incarceration point. I was just throwing things out there, as you can see. Um, <laughs> feel free to do that in debate. Just throw things out there and low key see what sticks. Like if they don't contest it, then it's true, right? In debate, everything's true until unless it's stated otherwise. So if I say the bees are dying in five years, and if you don't say that they're not dying in five years, then the judge, is, well, the judge has no other reason not to believe why bees don't die in five years, unless they have some extensive bee knowledge. And, but judges are also supposed to be impartial. So, you know, just throw it in there. If they don't address it, you, you're correct, essentially. How do you feel so far about that? About the impact cattle or the, if they don't address it? Oh, the impact calculation. Uh, impact cal, I mean, pretty good. I'll, uh, mass incarceration, um, I recently wrote an essay on it and like, it's still stuck in my head. So it was interesting to do an impact call on that. Oh yeah, that was a good, that was a good impact calculation. And I really liked your point. I get like technology is helping with the beats. Um, if you would have harped on that, earlier you should you you definitely that's a really good point just be like b decline is actually on the like sorry b sustainability is on the increase like bees are not dying like just really minimize my impact be like bees have made a comeback like <laughs> bees are not going anywhere and it'll take way longer than five years before like the world ends like probably 107 who knows? Like, just really minimize my impact. It would be like, people are saving the bees every day. Nobody's talking about mass incarceration. Where are these programs you were talking about? Like, really just play up your impact by kind of minimizing mine, you know? Which you did. Just like, just do that more. But we only have 45 seconds. So it's like, we're limited on what we can do. But yeah, that's kind of how frame, framework works. I mean, impact calculation works. Really just lay to the judge why we should care about your problem more than the other ones. You wanna try it again or you wanna move on? We can move on. Okay, so let's go into cross-examination. Um, give me one moment just to pull up the lesson for this one. Okay, so cross-examination or cross-X. I believe it's gonna be a, a little similar to public forum. However, the only difference is that you don't have like the grand crossfire, like it's usually 1v1, where it's like you have the person asking the question and the person answering. Now there is some variance in that, which you can do something called tag team. You won't really have see it a lot as you move up the divisions and you get to like varsity, but tag team crosses essentially when you and your partner can both ask the person questions instead of it being 1v1. Um, the defaults of doing tag team is that usually during the cross-ex portion, your partner has time to prep for their next speech. That's why when you're asking the questions, you're not gonna be the one speaking next for your side, it's gonna be your partner. So you're asking questions and they can kind of like prep a little bit and like kind of think about their next speech while you're doing the cross-ex. But if you guys wanna do tag team cross-ex, that's also a skill that you can utilize. 
But so that's just a preface for cross-ex, um, how to use cross-ex to your advantage. So again, there's two ways to kind of use cross-ex. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with like asking clarification questions. So if you don't understand anything, cross-ex is the time to ask them. Be like, can you re-emphasize who your impact is? Or can you re-talk about um, your harm in this one card? Can you explain that a little bit more? Like anything you're kind of fuzzy on, use cross-ex as a way to clarify it because you can't really argue against something you don't understand. Um, but use that sparingly because they can take that to their advantage and just waste all your time explaining their plan. So kind of do very direct clarification questions and not so much open-ended questions because if you're like, can you explain your plan again? Then I would personally use that as a chance to talk about all the good points of my plan, just keep rambling on why the judge should vote for me. And then you're like, huh, like, <laughs> stop. So some very directed clarification questions, use them sparingly because the other side can use that to their advantage. Now for you, you can, so one way to use it is for clarification questions. Another way to use cross-ex, and this is the more effective way to cross, use cross-ex, is to your advantage and create a strategy. So you want to set a trap for the other team to get them to agree to your points. So you're not gonna outright say, you agree to my plan, right? You're gonna kind of like create, because <laughs> they're gonna be like, no, um, you're going to create a sequence of questions that's going to get them to kind of concede what you want them to say or allude to it in a way. So I'm trying to think of how, like an example of this. So if you want them to say, okay, mm if you want them to say that, like concede to the point that no one cares about the bees, right? That's your plan. You're debating. You're like, no one cares about the bees. No one's, no one's paying attention to them. You're going to ask questions and be like, in the past 10 years, have you heard of any initiative programs to protect the bees? They're most likely going to be like, no. Um, you're going to ask a question. I should really think of this ahead of time. But you know, you're just going to set it up to get like, and you're going to kind of throw them off. So you're not gonna, you're gonna bury the lead a little bit. Like you're gonna keep asking them corded questions, but like, you agree with this, which means that, oh, let's do river rights. Let's agree with river rights, right? So you can start with a question where it's like, you agree that humans, like we live on planet earth, right? We're like, yes. So it's like, you wanna protect the place that you live, right? Yes. So, um, and we need plants to help us grow and survive. Yes. Um, and a lot of plants rely on resources that rivers give them. They're gonna say yes. You're gonna be like, so that means that we should protect the rivers because they protect our food, right? Then you get them to concede that we should protect our rivers, which means that we should pass our plan, which means that our plan's a good idea. You kind of see that? So like you're kind of you're gonna ask them kind of the larger surface level questions, and then bit by bit you're gonna narrow it down until you get to your what you want to get out of them. And the thing about cross-ex, this is a lot also, I feel like I'm rambling, so feel free to like stop me, ask verification questions because it's a lot right now. But um, the thing about cross-ex is that the judge does not blow it. So everything that you say in cross-ex is heard, but not noted, you know, if that makes sense. So like the judge is gonna be paying attention, but they're not gonna be flowing any points that are made because unless you bring them up in your next speech, it will not count. So if you make a really good point in your cross-ex where they can see that we should protect our rivers, the judge isn't gonna count that unless you take what they said and then your next speech be like, judge, in my previous cross-ex, they conceded that we should protect our rivers because they are crucial to our food supply, which means that we should pass our plan. Like, unless you, you have to bring that up in your next speech because they won't evaluate it. Does that make sense? Cool, perfect. Um, so yeah, and also waste your opponent's time. Like I said, if they ask you an open-ended question, run with it. Just do like talk, just talk. Cause they have three minutes, use up their time. Of course, if they, if someone is wasting your time, you can respectfully be like, I'm sorry, this is my cross X. I need to move on. Like, just like, you know, respectfully take charge. And then if they interject you, usually after the first 
question just kind of like move on because then the judge can kind of see you're like trying to do something sneaky so you know waste their time sparingly if they ask you like politely to move on just move on don't fight them um but yeah so waste your time and also if someone's wasting your time respectfully ask them to move on to the next question because at the end of the day it's your cross-ex and you have a right to like kind of direct them to where you need to go so if you're like i'm sorry to cut you off we need to move on the judge is going to be fine with that you won't be seen as rude um yeah any questions on cross-ex how to use it structure anything like that nope cool so we're gonna be playing a little game a little exercise <laughs> the dynamic duo is gonna be paired again um it's called cross ex hot seat and one person's going to be in the hot seat and one person's going to be cross examining and i'm going to have one minute to ask you questions or vice versa you can ask me questions and you're just going to answer them so just random questions we can maybe curtail them to the app since like we're just like prepping for like the tournament in two weeks so yeah any questions no nope. Would you like to be the crosser or the crossy? I don't even know if that's real words, but we're using them. I can be the person in the hot seat. In the hot seat. Ooh, okay. I got to think of questions. So I'm going to be throwing questions at you. I'm going to try to make them about the affirmative. Um, do you think you need more help answering questions about the neg side or the app side? Mm, actually, I just don't need it. Um, I think I'll go for the answering ab about the AF as if I'm the AF, just so I can like look over the econ DA one more time before I jump right into answering that type of stuff. Perfect. So I'm going to ask you questions about the econ DA. Um, <laughs> so thanks for giving me a direction. Um, so I'm just going to be asking you questions about it and you're going to respond as if you're the affirmative. So you're advocating for the plan. You're saying we should protect rivers and I'm going to say no. All right. Any questions? No. Okay. Well, this is also a good refresher for me for all the like arguments. So, you know, we're all, we're all benefiting from this. Let me pull up a timer. So I'll do one minute, starting now. Okay, so do you, be you believe it's important to care about our economy, right? I think that it can be very important to care about our economy. Okay, great, yeah, because our economy is kind of the backbone of our country, it provides jobs and like livelihoods for people, right? It is a part of our country, yes. Okay. And since it's so important, that means that we should try to maintain it and keep it stable, right? I think that it's important to protect. I mean, economies are a part of the country, but then also biodiversity is a part of the entire world. So, I mean... Yeah. No, yeah, I agree biodiversity is a part of the world, but specifically about econ, we should try to keep it stable, right? I mean, yeah. Okay, cool. So, great. That's a minute. Exactly. So, yes. So, like, you can, like, also kind of concede it. Be like, yeah, of course. Like, keep it stable. Move on. Like, because, you know, like, I think also in the affirmative, if I'm remembering correctly, the econ DA is saying that the economy is not stable, right? And then the app is saying it's stable, or is it vice versa? Let's look at it. Um, let me pull it up. Um, okay, let me reshare my screen. So, econ DA, econ DA. Maybe I got it confused, but I think. I think, yeah. I think one thing the app is trying to say is that protecting rivers is a way to protect our econ, because that's 
a Turley card. Well, Turley's that uh, author. So wait, which side was six? I'm gonna word search this. I could have sworn one card was like the econ the economy is stable now, so protecting rivers doesn't do anything. Was that the econ DA? Hmm. Economic decline causes war. Biodiversity loss won't cause extinction. Anyway, but the, I guess the line of questioning still holds. Like we want to make sure that the economy is stable, right? That's what I was kind of trying to push. So then in my next speech, I'd be like, judge. Judge, my opponent conceded my that opponent our economy is stable and that should be our priority within this round. Like I'm kind of twisting your words, like, you know, <laughs> like, of course you can feel free your next round to like contest what I said, but I'm gonna try to like use what you said to my advantage. So I'm gonna say they conceded that econ is important that we should prioritize it. Therefore you cannot vote for the affirmative because the affirmative is gonna destabilize the economy. And they agree that they wanna avoid that and they wanna maintain it stable. So you have to vote for me. Like, you know, something like that. So you see how you're trying to like, you get, you get them to say one thing and then yeah. you just run with it. <laughs> you just take it in your next speech and you run with it. Like, of course they're gonna contest it, but you're like, you literally said it. So um, yeah, so we can talk a little bit more about the econ disadvantage. Business is unable to operate. Yeah, so if I like, if I had more time and I was like refreshed on the econ DA, I would probably structure the questions like many local businesses use rivers to help their businesses, right? You're gonna be like, yes. And we can be like, but your plan would then take away the business's rights to use that river, right? And then you're gonna be like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> like, ooh. Because like, of course you're gonna like, concede, well, you don't have to concede it. You can say, no, businesses don't use rivers. Like they have like running irrigation systems that don't use direct runoff or something like that, you know, like whatever. But if I were like asking a process question towards you for the econ DA and I'm trying to get into econ collapse, I'll be like, many small businesses rely on the resources provided by rivers, right? Yes. If we were to grant, if we were to pass the act plan, it would then prevent local businesses from using the rivers at the same capacity they were using it before. Yes. And you'd be like, would this reduce capacity? That then hurts small businesses, right? And then you can say no, but then I'm gonna like take what I just got out of that before that in my next speech and be like, they conceded that small businesses use rivers. They like, you know how like, you're just kind of like, you're blurring the lines a little bit. You're like, they conceded that they use rivers, they're important to businesses and they wanna take that away from you. Like, you know? You kind of see how cross X is like more strategic when you do it that way yeah. instead of just asking questions. Okay, cool. Do you want to try asking questions or thinking of some a line of questions? It can literally be three. Like we can, uh, you can take time too to think about it. Okay, I'll take one minute. Okay, you can have totally. You can have more than that. Um, I want you to think of like just kind of a sequence, so you can literally pick one card that you wanna get me to agree to, or that you wanna take and run with, and then give me some questions, like feed me questions to agree to that card, you know? Okay, this is hard also to do on the spot. Um, so don't feel any pressure. Let me know if you need help also, but I'll give you, like, just let me know when you're ready. I'll check in again at 5.05 to see how you're doing, but you got this, okay? All right. I'm ready if you're there. All right, perfect. Are we ready? You said yes. Yep. So, um, yeah, let me see it. Let's try it. Uh, just checking, I'm the AF, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Do you agree that there is some type of animal life inside, inside of rivers? Yeah, of course. Do you agree that animals help with the Development of science, like biology science, that type of stuff? Yes, they do. Do you agree that science research that we collect would go into um, being able to develop vaccines? Yeah, the science has created the vaccines. That's correct. Um, that was 
my chain, but I also have one more question. All right. Do you agree that fish are a part of our economy? Yes, like different fisheries, fishing in the ocean, those are very important. Okay. Do you agree that if we were not to have, so do you agree that if people stopped selling fish because there were no more fish, that the economy would decline? Well, it depends on how we get to that point of the lack of fish being available. There is plenty of fish in the ocean in addition to many fisheries, like fish farming practices. Cool. All right, let me see. What did you get out of the sequence? Uh, so for the first one, I was, when I was asking about science, so I think that whenever I'm AF, I'll run the impact of um, having biodiversity equals to having more science equals to being able to develop more vaccines and stuff like that. So you admitting that um, animal research plays into uh, vaccines, I would take that and be like, yeah, she just confirmed our evidence. So I would say that because that's kind of what the evidence is talking about. And then for the second chain, I, so uh, one part in the same piece of evidence, it says that our aquatic life are important sources of food, energy, jobs, uh, and jobs. So I wanted to take that and talk about how that would also decline the economy. So since you responded about the economy, I was going to take that and kind of just say a sentence of why you're wrong and how um, fish, uh, not having enough fish in rivers would impact our economy because that is my impact. Yeah, okay. I really like your thinking. You're like, I see the dots. I see the connecting. Like you're, you're getting it. The one thing I would just add is n try not to be too general with your questions. Like if we're talking about like the economy stability that directly like links into the econ DA. But if we get too general, like say like science helps research, me agreeing to that doesn't necessarily connect to protecting rivers because it, like we can apply science to anything really. And I didn't directly respond to like, we need rivers to protect science, right? Like it's, it's just one factor of it, but I can just be like in my next speech, be like, of course I agree that science is important. It helps the vaccines, but I didn't respond or I didn't directly, or like that doesn't have to, that doesn't apply directly to rivers. We don't need rivers to, like rivers aren't the backbone of science. Like we can look at grass, we can look at soil, we can look at the atmosphere. So try like to like go big, but not too big. Because then when I just agree to like general statements like science is good, then that could be taken anyway and I can still like respond and twist it, you know? So, but I see it, I see it connecting. I'm like, okay, these are good. So super, super good on the way you're using like Prosex. There are tournaments in two weeks. So I'm very excited to like prep these a little bit more. We need to get you a partner. I know we need to get you a partner. So hopefully we can get more people to come next week. Um, I know Emery, the coach wasn't able to like host it in the classroom. So that's probably why like we have such a low turnout today. Um, and next week we should definitely get one. So moving forward, we should definitely just talk about getting a partner and we're gonna start preparing speeches. So we're gonna run through one ACs, two ACs and how to extend speeches, things like that. But before, I think I'm getting too ahead of, too ahead of myself. Let's first go back to cross -sex. Do you have any questions? about like, you coming up with questions for cross-sex, any tips, concerns, anything like that concerning cross-sex. Um, so if I took, I know how you just said that the, the last question on the science relating to vaccines is too general if i if after that i asked another question like if since we're gathering river it no since we're gathering science from rivers wouldn't be losing a little bit of science bad 
We could do that. I think if you're going to go the, there just needs to be a clear link, a clear link between like we've found significant scientific like discoveries or progress through rivers. And if we get rid of those or if we don't protect them, then that's like a heat, that's a detrimental mm, impact on the science community. You know, like if we kind of structure it to where we know for a fact that scientists heavily rely on rivers, then it'll be useful. But if we don't have that card or we don't have that evidence showing that like 70% of scientific research comes from rivers, then it's like they're not that important and we can get those discoveries elsewhere. You know? So I think I think it's like that's good. It just needs to like there needs to be a heavier impact on the link between scientists using rivers for like vaccines or for good or something like that. Okay. So I want to do that. Run with it. <laughs> that's good. Anything else? Okay, okay, okay. So that is, I, again, I don't want you to be too far ahead of everyone else, but at this point it's inevitable. Um, I'm trying to think, is, do you just want to start creating speeches? Well, let's do a temporary check-in. How are you feeling? Mm, I am feeling pretty good with the evidence. I. We can start basing kind of like constructive speeches because or at least for the AF, because those are just reading cards. Okay. Yes. Let's start looking at the informative. So did you make a copy of this packet? Do you have one in your drive? Yep. Like one you can edit. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you share me that link so we can copy and paste it and reorganize it? Wait. Yeah, hold on. It's you're all good. I just requested it. Okay. Instead of opening up my email. This new link should work. Perfect. Okay. 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 Let's start the affirmative. And then whoever's gonna be your partner will just like them in. Okay, so I want to hear how you were thinking of structuring this and then we can kind of like together like figure it out. Um, but do you remember it was two, three weeks ago when we talked about the ships? The or hips? Ships. It was like, it was like inherency, solvency, uh -huh. plan, those things. Uh, I remember them a little bit. Okay, cool. Let me pull up which 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 lesson plan was that? I think it was week one. But I'll pull it up just as a reference because that's kind of how we are going to structure our affirmative is in that order. So let me pull it up just as a refresher because I'm a very visual person. So I need. Okay, so remember this is how we create the one AC. You have hips. I called it. I said ships, but it's hips whatever acronym helps you remember it. Um, but again, we start with either inherency, which is just laying out the status quo, what is currently going on in the world. So the 1AC is telling a story, essentially. It's like, here's what's going on in the world. Here are problems. Here's the hero, right? Our plan. This is, they're going to save the day. And they're going to save the day by doing this. So I kind of think of like the 1AC is telling a story to the judge. You're laying out the scope you're like here's the land we live in here's the problem here's how we fix it yay your plants gonna save the day and then you have the solvency on how it's going to operate so that's kind of what the 1ac is going to look like so based on this let's just find some inherency in harm cards so let me go back to the evidence packet So we're gonna start with, again, the inherency or like laying the scope. What's the status quo? What does the world currently look like within these debate, within, within this debate round? So let's see. So we have a few advantage cards, is that it? Okay, yeah. 
And also we can re-highlight. That's also the joys of autonomy, I guess, is that you can re-highlight and do whatever you want with this packet. So if you see some sentences that like aren't really that important or you wanna add more time, feel free to re-highlight whatever you want. But let's just like read the taglines and then we can decide on which parts we wanna read. So we have rivers are in danger, overuse of rivers is threatening water health, killing species that are critical to global ecosystems. Maintaining the health of U.S. rivers is necessary to sustain life on Earth. I'm also skipping some. What does this say? Oh, also, <laughs> you don't have to read cards all the time. Like, of course, it's good to get evidence on the table, but especially in novice, a lot of judges really like hearing, like, personal anecdotes or just, like, your own kind of words. So if you have, like, or we can even, like, write this together, something called a block. A block is just like a pre-written, like you probably heard of blocks. Yeah, it's just a pre-written like answer or like excerpt that you want to add into your speeches. Um, that's not evidence. So we can like pre-write some blocks just to make it a little bit personal, really go above and beyond and get that golden star and that first place trophy. So we can do that next week, but let's just get our like cards together and time it to see if we have room for that. But yeah, so they say add in your own words. We can do that if we have time. And then the last card is granting rights to the environment is a moral obligation. Okay. So I think, let's see, how, how fast do you read also? Do you know about how many cards you can fit into like an eight minute speech? Or do you usually do like one card per minute? I think. So it's like, if you want, because it's also like before we put the speech together, we need to figure out how fast you read or like kind of like the pace so if you want if you can just read through like set your timer to eight minutes and just start reading through the cards and let me know how far you get with one ac cards so like set a timer and just read through all of the one ac cards like just tagline author's date and highlighted portions until you hit the last solvency card and let me know how far you get like if you run out of cards before the eight minute speech is up, we need to cut. If you get through all the cards in eight minutes, then we need to add. Does that make sense? Okay. So I would recommend just timing it, seeing how far you go. Okay. Uh, for the first two cards, so I'm gonna read what's highlighted. The rest I'll just read what's underlined. Um, read what's highlighted. And then when we go back in, we'll re-highlight or just highlight underlined portions. So just read the highlighted portions. Well, what I mean is for the ones that are not highlighted, I'll just read the underlined. For the ones that are highlighted, I'll read that. Oh, are there the some that are not highlighted? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Just read the, I thought they were all highlighted. Just read the underlined portions. Sorry. My bad. Okay. So say your time in eight minutes. Let me know how far you get. Do I stop at uh, the end of 1AC solvency? Yes. Okay. I read all the cards and I've got 150 left. Oh, <laughs> okay. So we can definitely add in um, like the personal anecdote or like the summary in addition to re-highlighting some cards because that's like almost two minutes. So let's look at it. So I guess we can keep all the cards in, um, which is great. Like more cards, the better, the more we can like feed off of. But is there any order that you wanna change? So like either the way we structure the advantage cards, some people also put the plan first. So you could keep it like the story structure, like problem solution, or you can do solution problem, how the solution works. It's totally up to you, but which structure do you prefer? I prefer to say the plan, and then I think that saying the problem and the solvency is good. Okay, cool. So we can put that on the doc. So let's restructure this. So I guess let's add a page. How do I do this? I don't want to like mess with the structure too much. I will just put one AC here. 
So like we can show that we're starting the winning seat. So we know what I see, and then you can just re remove it. So put the plan text first in front of the advantage. And then, or if you don't want to, because usually when I do it, I create like a doc without the evidence packet and I just paste my cards individually in through there. Or we could keep the evidence packet and just move it in here. So which way works best for you? I think I'll just make a separate doc. Okay. So let's make a separate doc and just copy and paste the cards in the order we want and we can remove it. Like we can re-edit, do all those good things. So get started on that doc and I want you just like to remove the order and then we can start talking about personal anecdotes and all those good, good things. So let's look. Uh, when I'm copy and pasting, I just realized that I missed the rivers are in danger card when um i was reading i thought that maintaining the health was the first card but i mean it's still under eight minutes okay yeah so it was like 150 right yeah okay so let's say we it'll probably take like 50 seconds to probably read the first card if that so we're, we're still a good minute over yeah so we're good okay Okay, I am done with the copy and pasting. Okay, great. Oh, I see you put the new link in the chat. Okay, so we have the plan. The United States government should rest rivers, advantage, advantage. All right, so our task now is to write, I guess, a little anecdote. So this is really just like a personal, I don't know, a personal, you know, just a little context on like how you feel about rivers, why you personally think you should protect it if you ever like visited a river. I know there's not really a lot close to us in California, like there's no rivers or lakes. Are rivers and lakes the same? I don't know. No, they're not. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so like, <laughs> but still, still talk about like, just kind of like the ecosystem and how it kind of benefits you, or like how pollution has affected your life. If you live near a freeway, if you or just kind of like, I'm trying to think, because like, I feel like rivers are kind of hard to connect directly, because we don't interact with them that often. But just kind of talk about like humans innate responsibility, I guess, to protect nature what nature means to you, how we combat pollution, why we should protect nature, and then how that protection should spill over to rivers, right? Like we have, we have national parks, we have all these beautiful nature things that we should protect and rivers should be included in that. So that can be your thing. I guess we can like wrap up for today. And like, so you guys, you can have like that moment just to kind of like, you know, reflect, write it. So I guess this would kind of be like homework or, we can just do individual like working time. So if you want to just kind of like write it out and then we can start re-highlighting next week or you, we can just like, you can write it out like after this practice and then we can go over next week. It's totally up to you what you want to do. It can be homework. I mean, it's a week. Yeah. <laughs> so um, just like, right. It doesn't have to be super, super long, like maybe like a paragraph. Um, just about like nature, why we should protect nature, how rivers are included in that. And then we'll discuss it next week, as well as we can start re-highlighting some cards, just like maybe some more underlined portions that we would think is important, just so we can really hit that eight minute mark. All right, do you have any questions about today, about practice, anything in the future? No. All right, thank you again for showing up, being consistent. Really appreciate it. If you need anything else, just send me a message in Slack, send me an email, um, and we will get, hopefully get you a partner next week and start prepping for the tournament. Cool. All right, I'll see you later. Thank you. Okay, bye. bye.